In 2010, the government of Uganda set itself a vision to transform herself and her people from a peasant to a modern and prosperous country within 30 years. To achieve this, Uganda would focus her efforts on key sectors such as agriculture, tourism, minerals, oil and gas, infrastructure development, and human capital development, sectors with the potential to quickly influence GDP growth in the medium term, leading to the desired economic development. To drive the above growth, the development of an integrated and highly interconnected transport network to efficiently and affordably transport goods and people was a must. Key to achieving this interconnectedness was the timely construction, upgrade, rehabilitation and maintenance of the country's road network, which carries 96.5% and 99% of freight cargo and passenger traffic, respectively. But due to lack of an efficient framework for the timely disbursement and tracking of financing for road maintenance and the resulting funding shortfalls between 1997 or 1998 and 2007 or 2008, there was an accumulated maintenance backlog on the national roads network of 3,500 kilometers or 33 percent of the 11,000 kilometers at the time. The district roads network in poor to very poor condition climbed from 30% to 55% over the same period. To ensure a stable, adequate and timely flow of funds and the subsequent efficient planning and effective delivery of roads nationally, the Uganda Road Fund was created by the Uganda Road Fund Act 2008. Uganda Road Fund commenced its operations in 2009 with the duty to finance the implementation of the annual road maintenance programs ARMP that are carried out by the following designated agencies Uganda National Roads Authority, Kampala Capital City Authority, and other agencies responsible for district, urban, and community access roads DUCAR, namely municipalities, town councils, and sub counties. As provided in Section 21 of the Uganda Road Fund Act 2008, the fund would operate as a second-generation fund financed by a variety of fees and road user charges including fuel levies, transit fees, road licenses, axle load fines, road tolls, weight or distance charges, traffic and road safety fines. The above designated agencies do receive funding every quarter from Uganda Road Fund to implement roadworks scoped within a particular quarter of a given financial year. By extension, the districts are obligated to transfer on time road maintenance funds to town councils and sub counties, which bear sub agency relationship with the districts. In a bid to hold these agencies accountable, the fund commits the agencies by way of performance contracts and also monitors and evaluates road maintenance works and activities of the agencies. It also undertakes financial and technical reviews of the agency's works on a quarterly basis. The fund is supervised by the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development who also reports to Parliament on its performance annually. The fund also reports to Parliament through the Ministry of Works and Transport that presents its annual road maintenance programs for appropriation and approval by Parliament. To date, as the fund celebrates a decade of financing road maintenance, Dr. Marian Sebunya, the board chairperson of Uganda Road Fund, recounts the journey and some of the successes the Uganda Road Fund has achieved. In the 10 years, what we have put in is uh, 3.1 uh, inclusive of ferries and road safety and road maintenance and our cap our agencies now have capacity to oversee these and our staff have capacity to do the monitoring and evaluation. We are now pu putting in, we have had systems that have been weak but we are strengthening the systems for road maintenance um, we have put in place oversight and performance audits in our agencies. We have undertaken a range of very vital um, studies. For example, the allocation formula. How do we allocate the funds? We had to come up with a formula. The allocation formula, we have done another study of how much should each kilometer cost. Okay, we can't be specific, but we give ranges. For example, if it's a rocky area, how much should a kilometer um, take 
to maintain. If it's mushy, how much should it take to maintain? So we have done those studies, which were very important. Uh, also come up with a formula of how to address emergencies. When emergencies occur, how do we quickly, how do we respond promptly? How, what would needs to be done that we've done also. And um, we've uh, built uh, uh, relations with stakeholders like the European Union, like um, the, the, the agencies like UNRWA with the Minister of Local Government, Minister of Works. We work together, we do research together. There are things that we do together, like research and um, like now technical support from development partners. Now we have capacity to engage development partners to come up with the support that we may not get from government. Engineer Dr. Michael Odongo, the fund's outgoing executive director, as well as its pioneer chief executive, who has led the road funding agency for the last 10 years, also shares his experience and the milestones he has led the fund through. I think what has worked most is that we were able to put road maintenance on the national agenda. Generally, the plight of roads, not even only road maintenance, I think generally the plight of roads, we have been able to put it on national agenda. There is no leader, and I've said this many times before, there is no leader right from the president of this country to the LC1 chairperson who can address a public gathering without speaking about roads. Roads is now on our lips. Even religious leaders, when they are preaching, issues of roads will come in. Even school children, when they are doing their school activities, issues of roads will come in. NGOs, civil society, everyone the issue of roads is now a national issue and everyone is very very acutely aware of their need for road maintenance actually roads is now a right ugandans now consider that good roads is a right it's no longer a favor and government can only justify that it's governing properly if uh, the people are saying yes we are satisfied uh, with the service you are providing on roads so that's the biggest success we have, that we can say uh, we have done. And we have been able to focus the minds of all classes of people, road users, uh, our political leaders, civil society, all who have been focused, they have focused on roads and involvement in management of roads. So we have put that on the national agenda. Two, we have been able to, imp to, 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 to instill a sense of responsibility for the resources of road maintenance in the road agencies. There is now less wastage. It is now very risky to steal road maintenance money and hide it because we have, we have focused attention, both our own internal audit and monitoring attention, plus the attention of oversight agencies of government in controlling or overseeing road maintenance money. So road money is now very, 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 very well guarded through public interest. Of course, I can't say we have eliminated 100%, corruption 100%, it is still there, but we have been able that we sign performance agreements with these agencies, provide resources to finance activities in these performance agreements, and they stick to, this performance, to the terms of this performance agreement. So in that respect, resources are now well guarded. We have eliminated losses. Over the last 10 years, the fund's mandate and portfolio has grown to 140,000 kilometers of public roads categorized as 20,500 kilometers national roads under the management of Uganda National Roads Authority. 2,110 kilometers Kampala City Roads under Kampala Capital City Authority. 30,000 kilometer district roads under 134 district local governments. 3,800 kilometers urban roads under 41 municipalities, 7,700 kilometers urban roads under 227 town councils, and an estimated 60,000 to 80,000 kilometers of community access roads under 1,155 sub counties. The fund has also grown from 363 billion Uganda shillings annually in 2010-2011 to over 500 billion shillings in the financial year 2018-2019. 
Over and above the routine road maintenance, Uganda Road Fund also finances other special interventions that include the town council project where the fund finances the tarmacking of at least 1.0 kilometers of main streets in every town council in a bid to improve user comfort through the reduction of dust and safety in urban centers. The maintenance of bridges on the DUCAR network to ensure uninterrupted connectivity all year round. Emergency works on the DUCAR network to provide for unforeseen interruptions due to adverse weather. Annual repair and servicing of district, municipality and town council equipment. Operations and infrastructure improvements of nine ferry crossings. Axel load control and enforcement, namely the operations and maintenance of eight fixed and four mobile way bridges under Uganda National Roads Authority. Road safety activities on both national and Kampala city roads, including but not limited to street lighting, road signage, marking of roads, demarcation of road reserves, protection of road reserves on national roads, and signalization of junctions and maintenance. Research on low-cost seals technology as an alternative to the expensive asphalt used to pave roads and road user satisfaction surveys to understand the level of customer satisfaction among road users. As a result of increased internal Uganda Road Fund and external agencies' capacity, today funds absorption has improved with Uganda National Road Authority and Kampala Capital City Authority at 100%, while for DUCAR roads agencies, absorption is at 62%. Today, the National Paved Road Network in the financial year 2018-2019 stood at 6,348 kilometers against the second National Development Plan target of 6,000 kilometers by 2021. The National Roads Network in fair to good condition stood at 93% for paved roads and 75% for unpaved roads against the target of 85% and 72% respectively. This has led to increased road user satisfaction as well. Findings from the 2019 Road User Satisfaction Survey by Uganda Road Fan shows that the percentage of respondents who were satisfied with their road user experience more than doubled to 57% in 2019 from 27% in 2017. This was the highest road user satisfaction since the survey's inauguration in 2012. Over and above general improvement in road user satisfaction, it is important to note that all road user groups reported increased user satisfaction scores. All regions of Uganda reported increased satisfaction. Overall, 63% of the respondents felt that Uganda's roads had improved in the previous year. 58% attributed their improved satisfaction to better road maintenance and rehabilitation works. Overall, 58% of the respondents said they felt safe while traveling on Uganda's roads in 2019, compared to 34% in 2017. But all these successes have not been without challenges, as the board chairperson explains. Some of the challenges was like the capacity of our designated agencies, that, that's the local um, councils, to handle the money and account for it and uh, uh, set the right uh, uh, people and tools in place to also carry out their mandate. So accountability was not there, reporting was weak. Then it was at about 30% compliance with our other designated agencies, not UNRWA, not KCCA, and municipalities had a bit of capacity, uh, but um, um, the, 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 the lower councils, we were struggling to build capacity for them to report. Uh, at that time, I think uh, reporting and accounting accountability was at about 30%. Uh, today, we are at um, 90%. Dr. Odongo says that perhaps the biggest challenge still lies in underfunding of road maintenance. For example, the fund was allocated a total of 512 billion Uganda shillings in the financial year 2018-2019 for road maintenance against total requirements estimated at 1.807 trillion Uganda shillings, therefore leaving a shortfall of 1.29 trillion Uganda shillings. 
Dr. Odongo believes this can be settled once the issue of the independence of the Uganda Road Fund from the Consolidated Fund is actualized as is provided for in the law that set up the Uganda Road Fund. Of course, the issue of our money as intended in law is still a problem and that's what has not worked. We were supposed to have to access road user charges, uh, the fuel levy, the, uh, the, the tolls, the, the, the accident fines, the accident load fines, the transit fees and others, so that we can have this money put in our independent account in Bank of Uganda monthly, as intended in the law, which money we would now use to finance programs of agencies. We have hit a roadblock in section 14 of the Uganda Revenue Authority law. Now that section prohibits us from accessing that money. So we are still depending on the quarterly releases from Minister of Finance. And these quarterly releases has three distinct disadvantages that uh, sometimes does not give us adequate means to finance agencies. The money is, is not adequate. We should, be, uh, we should be having one trillion now annually for road maintenance. We only have 450 billion. The money is not reliable, prone to budget cuts, of course, as you know. They promise you so much money at the beginning of the financial year. By the end of the financial year, you receive less. And it's not timely. The money comes sometimes late, sometimes early. So when you have these three factors affecting road maintenance money in any country, definitely it affects the quality works that we can deliver on roads. Remember, road maintenance has to be a 24-7 activity. 24-7 roads must be maintained because we travel on these roads 24-7. Like Dr. Odongo, Dr. Merian Sebunya also underscores the importance of the need for balancing investments into both the maintenance of existing road infrastructure with investments into new road developments. Let's advocate, let's um, articulate the need for uh, the funds, increased funding for road maintenance vis-a-vis -vis, uh, road development because we are spending so much on the development side so we said let we went, we told the government to balance the the, the the development and the maintenance because our biggest asset as a, as a country i think you had it in the workshop uh, here is um road network every conference i've been to of um of transport, when we talk about maintenance, they tell you that in the African culture there is nothing like uh, maintenance, that you can't even find the word in any of the African languages. We know how to acquire, but we don't know how to maintain. So uh, the advice here uh, is that um, since road transport accounts for 90%, of especially of passengers, 90% and of uh, uh, cargo is um, 95%. Um, I would uh, give advice that we focus on the infrastructure that supports the transport. That's the roads. So we need to balance, but more important to maintain what we build. In his parting shots, Dr. Odongo believes regardless of the challenges still faced by Uganda's road sector, the sector is headed for greater things and would like to express gratitude to all stakeholders who made his 10 years at Uganda Road Fund worthwhile. Uh, just to thank you, to thank government for having prioritized roads. The feedback we've got from road users is that 10 years down the road, they are now satisfied. And I, as I said, my name is Moses and I want to repeat, Moses took the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt. I also took Ugandan roads from the very bad state in 2009 to today when 57% of road users can now say that they are satisfied. We are not in the promised land. We are viewing the promised land. Moses has taken the children of Israel from Egypt to the borders of the promised land and has shown them the promised land. I have shown the road users the promised land of excellent roads. 10 years down the road, 20 years from today, the story will be totally different if we continue on the present path. And I urge government not to let up prioritizing roads. They should intensify 
do what they have been doing, do even much more. And I want to thank them for that. Dr. Marian Sebunya is also confident that the Uganda Road Fund and the roads sector. would say that the road fund now is stable, is um, efficient enough to deliver for, for the country what they envisaged it to, to do in, uh, in the first place. Because when you are trying to reverse the, the, the agencies back into the ministries, I don't see the point. You started by saying the ministries should remain at the role of um, regulation, f policy formulation, and, and for us to do things more efficiently, let's create specific bodies to deal with specific needs. So once you have done that, and they are now getting to uh, an experienced and firm level where they can uh, properly and clearly deliver the mandate that you meant them to deliver, then at that point you are trying to take it back to where it came from. So um, uh, I would congratulate Road Fund today that it's strong enough to deliver the mandate, but it has taken them 10 years to build it. And I would advise government not to reverse that because we have just got to a level where now we are ready to take off and excel and show the results.